All right, third attempt a charm, right? Let's see. Can we actually hear my mic and the music that is the burning question? Let's see. I'm going to have to check my stream. It's up and running. All right, third attempt a charm, right? Let's see. And can yeah. we I can hear myself, hear my mic, and I can and hear the music. the music that is the burning question. That's fantastic. Let's stop that, start the music, and uh, get right into it. So in uh, these streams, I will be streaming quite regularly, and uh, we will be building out a site in Webflow. The first site I'm going to do is a... Uh, kind of a rebuild of an already existing news website. Uh, the name of the publication is Ergo. It's a Swedish news site and uh, we're gonna update the design a little bit and then we're gonna build it in Webflow. So I've already done the first couple of steps about checking for inspiration, updating some small design details, but we're gonna be uh, improving the design all the way through the build and uh, let's just walk through what I've already done so in this project uh, we're gonna be using Relium library and uh, this is actually the first time I tried their new site builder tool so they have created this new tool that uses AI to create um, a sitemap and uh, then a wireframe to that sitemap. So with the tool, I just quickly wrote out something like a news website uh, with six different categories. And this is what it gave me. I then just uh, modified it a little bit. And uh, also here in the wireframe, shows the components, switched out the components that I thought was gonna fit the project. To start off, maybe we can look at the uh, site we're gonna be making a new update of. So this is the site. It's uh, quite dull, to be honest, um, but it does the job. Uh, it's straightforward. Uh, they have categories on a sub navigation here and then a navigation up front, up top. Some ads, some blog posts, featured blog posts, the different categories, so on, so forth. So we're going to be making an updated sign of this website and building it in Webflow. So this is the wireframe and all of these are blank because these categories we're going to be building out with the exact same design. So that's why that's blank. And then we have advertisements page, about us page and a contact page. The home page with all of the different categories, a footer, newsletter sign up. They don't have a newsletter on their current site, but I'm thinking they should. Uh, some kind of ad uh, section here. Uh, we're not gonna be, I think we're, we're gonna be creating this from scratch. We're gonna be replacing this with something else and uh, this would be the blog post or the news article and i'm thinking that for the category pages it's just going to be a four uh, not three posts but four posts per page and then just go with an infinity scroll pretty much all the way down so you can see all the posts from that category. And then we're using two navigation components here because 
This one is going to be a sub navigation with all the categories. We're going to have a search button and we're not going to have two logos. So this is pretty much it. Um, so I already set up the project in Webflow and I imported uh, one Google type, uh, oh, Google font. Uh, so we're starting off with just one font and uh, let's go into the build. When working with Relium and Webflow, uh, Relium is using the uh, client first from FinSuite. It's a design system, pretty much, yes, a design system. So they have a set kind of rules for how to structure your site with page wrapper, wrappers, etc., and how to name uh, the different classes in your site. Uh, but when working with these, uh, with client first and Relume, I really recommend downloading their Chrome extensions. You can just Google Relume Chrome extension and Pinsuite Chrome extensions. When you install them, you get two more buttons here on in the Webflow Designer, with just some extra uh, use uses. So if you have the Relium add-on, you can straight copy from the Relium site and into the Webflow Designer. And FinSuite has some pretty nice stuff. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna be using them later on, but I'm just I just want to mention that heading into it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm actually going to be replacing this sub navigation and pasting in a fresh one. And we actually had the, some conflicts here. So we should not be having that. Uh, so is the classic on? No. So this is very important as well. So when you have the Relume tool here you want to enable the sync mode so when you paste components in uh, Webflow doesn't just duplicate the classes and create new classes you want to be using the classes that you already have made so let's try that again now that we have enabled class sync Relium classes synced successfully and we have a nav bar down here let's drag it to the top and now it looks kind of wonky that is probably because i have messed with these classes a little bit before um, so let's see if we can quickly fix that Actually, I think I kind of messed up these classes when messing around earlier before the stream. So what I'm going to do to just get the original component, I'm going to be deleting this again. And I'm going to turn off the class sync. So Webflow actually does duplicate the classes, so we get new classes with the right setup. So let's try that. Copy. Yeah, 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 we got some new classes. Now it still looks like shit. That is quite confusing, actually. Why does it do that? Let's see. All right, so it created some new classes, but not new classes for everything. So 
Create a new classes for nav r2 container. And uh, nav r2 component still has some of the stuff I have been messing around with. That is quite annoying, to be honest. So what we're gonna do, actually, let's see if we can just rewind this project to when, uh, before I messed with all of this. Let's see, where do we do this? Settings, backups. Let's see, when did I do this? September 15. Maybe. Let's see, how does this look? Yeah, this works. So this is how it should look. So let's revert back to this one. Yeah, restore. So that's a really nice uh, tool in Webflow to be able to just go back to before you mess stuff up so you can actually just uh, it's a really neat trick actually you can uh, create a backup copy and uh, if you want to try some stuff mess with some stuff you can just go ham with that and then if you want to revert just revert all right so before we start messing with the uh, navigation here Let's actually just go into the style guide first. So you can see what I've already done. So this is just the uh, Realium library style guide, version 1.5, client first v2. And I've only just pasted this site in. So I pasted all of these components or just all this this entire page so this is where we are right now and in the style guide I've just updated the the body body all pages I updated the font to Libre Baskerville and then on the buttons or actually I also updated the white to be a uh, off-white color with the hex code FCFAFA. And then I updated the buttons to have this interactivity. So when you hover the button, it just inverts like that. But other than that, this is all just standard right now. So let's go back to the home page. So now we want to start messing with these, this sub-navigation. So we're going to be setting up a CMS collection to update these links dynamically with our categories. Because we want to have a effect that when category is active, when we're on that category page, we want to highlight that button. But first of all, we want to remove this logo. But here's the kicker. We don't just want to remove the grid spot of this to make it a two grid, because we also want to align these links to the middle of the page while having this to the right. So if we just remove, let's see, yeah. If we just remove the logo, not the logo link, now we just have an empty div block or an empty link block, really. 
Let's see, can we actually? Uh, uh, can we make this into a dev block? Some? No. Okay, let's just do this. I don't want a link block there, but I'll happily just have an empty div block there instead. So I create a div block and press Control Enter to get the styles selector uh, selected. And I'll copy the style of the uh, link block, but with a div block selected. So navbar to link. Number two logo link like that, and now we'll just remove the link block. So I'm doing the doing it this way because it's just much more easy to align the center menu here. These links in the center if we have something taking up space here, just an empty div block. Uh, to counteract the div block or the button on this side. So if we preview the page, everything is aligned. Center. Next up, I think we're going to be changing this button to a search button. So we need a search icon. You can find these on Relume icons. If you have Realium subscription. I usually go for the table icons or the carbon. Um, or you can find icon packs wherever. There's lots of Google material icons are free to use for anyone. Um, we're just gonna go with the table icon, search for search. And this icon is perfect for us. We're gonna be doing the icon extra small maybe we can change this later then click copy for webflow copy to clipboard clipboard and go back into the webflow designer and let's just paste this right on top here now we have a small icon so we're gonna be wanting that to be bigger so we'll just replace the class with icon embed medium maybe and yeah that's about the size I like so now we can just remove this button and we have the search uh, here instead and we will also want to be wrapping this icon with a link block so webflow did this quite recently. You can actually just select uh, uh, the element, right click it and wrap in link block. There's also a short key, key, uh, hot key for that, but I haven't learned that quite yet. What was it? Shift Alt G maybe. Whatever. Now we have the link block. So we can just name that class something like Uh, navbar to link wrapper link block great and let's just right away just delete this drop down because we're not going to be having a drop down so we're just going to have normal links and we'll set up a collection list for this later. I think we're quite happy with this for now. Um, let's actually change these, the text of these as well. So on the original site, we have about us, contact us and uh, place your ads here advertisements so let's copy that about us contact us about us and let's actually do 
contact us here. And I'm gonna be writing this in Swedish, but you get the point. Let's delete this one, delete this one. And now my camera might be out of battery. Is that so? So unfortunately, my camera is out of battery. That was bad planning on my part. Let's just continue on for a little more and uh, we will do without the camera for now. So let's just hide that. We don't see the Sony imaging edge picture there. So let's continue. Um, one second. All right, maybe we can just replace this logo with the real one as well. So let's just take this from here, uh, right click and save. Maybe we can just copy. Can we do that? No, we can't do that. We have to save this. Then we'll drag this from our download folders right on top here. Great. Give that a class of navbar one logo and then remove the one already in place. And it just disappears. Why is that? Let's see. Hmm. Let's just set a width on this one. A minimum width of two rams, five rams, six, seven, eight. Let's do eight rams, something like that. Great. Now let's look on our. Uh, Figma file. So we'll also want to be uh, adding this text. Just some text to go with the logo. Let's add that now. Uh, we'll add that in here. Just a text block. And I'm pressing Ctrl E to get the quick binder in. And then we'll want to be making the logo link thingy. Yeah, we want this inside of the logo link. So we'll make the logo link a flex box. Let's see what this Okay. Okay. Uh, 
interesting. Let's do the max height instead. This one to be we ran something like that. Yeah, and we want to align these and have our flex box to the middle. Want a little bit of gap. Let's do one ram. And inside of here, let's paste the text. And that actually looks good. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's gonna be have to be adjusted. So let's actually do on... Let's just add this quickly to... Let's make a class here first. Navbar one logo text. Create that class. And then on mobile landscape landscape, we will just hide this one. So then oh hello. Alright. Because now the logo doesn't have anything to relate to, I guess. You see, uh, web design is all about experimenting. So let's also set the uh, minimum width to 8 RAM. This should negate this. We will do this as a max width of what are our character units? CH. So if we do two CH, what happens? All right, right. The character units. So let's do. 20, 25, 30, 30 is good. So this is, uh, this will measure, this is a measurement unit that is based on character units. So each and every character. And basically I just want this one to be as wide as I want this uh, text block to be the width, so we get two two lines essentially. So when we scroll down, this now works. Super, looks great. Let's continue on, and actually. Right away here, I don't like that uh, the uh, page is how far how how is this container box? It's con the container is 80 rams, but the nav bar is the nav bar is where is the nav bar? Does never relate to. All right, yeah. So you can see the navbar is just five percent from the screen edge, and uh, it's nice to have it like that, of course. But I want this one and this one to align with the content of the page. So let's see if we can fix that. So let's change these paddings, the margins to margins instead. And then we can remove this. Just alt click on it.
and then we'll have the navbar component be maximum width 80 RAM. That does not do what I want it to do because it is justified to the left. And if we justify it to the center, that doesn't work. Let's see. How do we fix this? Let's reverse this one. And on the container, we'll do 80 RAM. Now it's centered. So if we remove these autos. That does not do it. What am I missing here? did not work the way I expected it to. Let's see, I'm doing something in reverse here and let's just try and figure it out. Um, See, the container large has max width 80 and auto. So this works, but we also wanted to have the padding here. So in these classes, let's see. Oh, yeah, right. So I should have actually, right? No. Container. Oh. Why doesn't this work though? Why does this fuck it up? Ah, uh, because it's with 100 maybe? Does this need to be with 100? 
I don't think so. so. Now if we do it like this. Everything scales as we want it to do. Great. And we don't want this uh, uh let's see this stroke this border anyways so let's just remove that and the page wrapper is transparent the body background should be select the body all pages the background color should be the off-white and now that works as intended. Great. So now when we scale it up and down, that works. Don't need this top top header here. So let's just remove this all at once. Don't need this header as well. Let's just do it like that. Perfect. And while we're at it, when we're doing the nav bars uh let's do make this a global component so we got components create a new component do the nav bar like that and then the sub navigation let's also make this a component right away sub nav bar Great. We can also Let's see how does this work on mobile? Right. So they change some stuff around and they create a menu for categories. Search. All right. So we will not want this when, let's see, let's see. don't need this really right yeah but where are our buttons how do they hide these or are these just hmm. This is kind of the, uh, okay. So they place the buttons in the, 
menu drop down. That is pretty neat. I kind of like that as well. But I only want one menu. So the question really is how will we be designing the navigation while we're on smaller breakpoints? And I think actually we'll just hide the sub navigation on smaller breakpoints and then in the menu we can have the search, all the buttons and all the categories. Yeah. I think that's the play here. So let's go edit the sub navigation. And on tablets, we will just do hide. Super. start like that um. all right I think we're gonna be doing um the collections let's do the collection structure right now and then we can go on with complete uh, starting to work on like well adding the collection categories to the sub navigation and then we'll start to design the header so let's go to our collections on the side here cms create your first collection Let's do categories first. You can have a color, an icon, description, name. Yeah, let's just try that. And then we will want a collection for the author, authors. Just go with these standard values right now. And let's add five items in here. Let's add, no, let's create these categories on our own. So we will do the categories that they already have. And let's, uh, let's not do any let's just choose some random color right now wait That's all of them, I think. Yeah. Then we'll do a new collection with the actual blog posts or the articles. Uh, 
and here we will want to add in some fields. We want to add a... I think we're gonna do... We want to do a multi-reference for the authors. Do we want to be able... them to be able to mark multiple authors or just one author for each article? Let's just go... Right now they only have one author per article. But you can imagine that maybe they would want to co-write or have multiple others, but let's just go with their uh, structures. So let's just do a single reference field. And we'll reference the others, authors. Do for Fattara, which is author in British save field. And then we'll also want a reference field to the categories. Save that field. Let's create this collection. And yeah, let's, sure, let's add 20 items here. So we can have a bunch of blog posts. And then we might as well just create another collection for uh, ads. So let's see if there's any easy. And then let's use this one, this, this template. Uh, and great. Now that we have those, we can start using them in our project. So the first thing I would say to do is maybe we can just modify this so all the categories show up here dynamically. So we will need a collection list in here. So control E collection list. And then we'll bring the source of categories like that. And it's look and it looks messy right now, but don't worry. And we can delete all but one of the links. And we're going to use this link as a item. So let's place it in here. And then we want it to be on, uh, what's it called, horizontally, not vertically. So let's go to the collection list and we will name it uh, navbar to collection list. Yeah, make it a flex box. And there we have it. And now we'll just have to modify this link to take in the um, ba -ba 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 -ba, the text to be the property of name and the URL. To be the collection item. Just like that. And yeah, this doesn't look that good with that, with these kind of like uh, doing multiple lines. So let's see if we can fix that right away. Let's see.
how would we go about doing this? Not what I intended to do. Um, but if we do this... Nope. How do we go about this? I guess we could just set a minimum width of some kind of value here, maybe like five rams, Oop. 10 rams, but that's not nice either. We want it to be just as long as the text. Hmm. Yeah, we don't want it to be inline text. If we do it like block, then we do nope, nope. Hmm. There's definitely a setting for this to not let the text wrap. the collection list and wait a second what oh right yeah There we go, breaking no wrap line on the collection item, which we will want to be renaming to an actual class name of now bar to collection item, like that. So now it doesn't wrap, great. Super, super, super. And then um, let's go into it again. Maybe we should just create this um, current effect right away. So let's see how we do that. 
So if you go to a categories template and we go to the fin suite extension. Oh, no, actually, we will just go to our wireframe right here. Click copy to webflow. And copy that to the body. And we'll replace this navbar to component. Let's also just turn on the class sync. We don't forget that. We remove that, but then add the sub navbar. We have the same component and let's see here. So when it's visited here, style selector navbar link to visited. Then we'll want to add a Just have an underscore. Uh, and they have this kind of an underscore. So we're gonna be re replicating this. I think this is nicer. So when this is it, we'll add a bottom. Bottom border, let's see, 1.2 rem. And the color will be color from the actual category collection. Yeah, so we had to go into the settings here to get the border color from categories. Now you can see the borders here. And let's go back and adjust the border to be a little bit bigger. Not that big. That looks kind of silly. 0.4 RAM, maybe? Point three. Point two. Point two five. That looks good for me. No, let's do point three. And now, hopefully, when we go to. Oh. Let's publish this.
to the public site. So. So it doesn't work. The uh, expected uh, thing here would be that the border would show up, but why doesn't it work? Because it is when visited. Disconnect these properties. This maybe. Uh, I don't know what they've done with uh, these stuff, but let's do choose a collection by current category. Yes, and then get text from category. Name. All right. This looks better. Set up. Get the border color from categories. Perfect. And now... Does that fix it? <laughs> no. Hmm. this not work I'm a little bit confused right now.
Well, that's very unfortunate. I'm not actually able to figure this out right on the spot. Uh, I will have to make some tutorial. Where is Google? So visited is not the right, it's the current. That explains some things. Let's remove this. And then what uh, we are on for Then we'll have to, yeah, do the current. And here we go with point. Nice. So now this works as expected. Nice. But I also want the uh, current to show up or the uh, What's it called? The border to show up when I hover it. So let's add the same to the hover state. And not do, let's do it like this. Let's add it to the hover state. And we run. And now. So now when I hover, you can see what, what I'm on, but if I hover first thing, now I go there. Super. So now we have this working as expected. I think the transition, I mean, we can make this a little bit smoother as well. So let's go into... Transitions and add borders, border. border radius, I guess. And add that is there. How does this work? Doesn't add anything to it. Didn't I add it? Let's try that again. On none. Add transition. Border radius. Like that. Will this stay? Okay, great. But yeah, it doesn't add to it. Weird. Ah, 
Oh no, it's not the border radius, of course, it's... Border... Will this work? There isn't really a transition effect for this. If we do it like that, let's see. Nah, we can't actually. Can't do it. Uh, not natively in Webflow at least. Or well, you could probably do some Canva. You could definitely do a uh, custom animation but let's not go into that right now okay so let's go back to the home page and this works let's also just yes, so we don't forget go back to the categories since we are actually pasted in some stuff here let's remove this navbar and add in the one that we created earlier. Let's also add in Do we have the global styles here? Let's add in the global styles. Alright. What did we accomplish here today? Mm, well, we did some basic setup work. We worked on the navigation uh, and we... Let's actually do that. Oh, that does not look good. We don't want that. So actually, one thing we can do is just real quick fix this. So it does that because it adds the border, but to avoid that, we can have a border on the link that is, will that work? Maybe that will take the color as well, that would be annoying. Yeah, I guess that's a workaround that works for now. Um, otherwise, like on buttons like this, the thing you can do is like for this button, for instance, uh, it doesn't have a border right now. It's all black, but when I hover it, I want it to have a black border and a white background. But the same problem appears here. But the thing you can do there is by actually having a black border on the black button. So there is actually a border on this black button right now, but well, you can't see it because it's all black anyways. So this is how you fix that alignment uh, issue. Superb. Okay, I think we're gonna be Staying there for now. Or should we add these dividers as well, maybe? I think so. Oh, 
they actually have another sub categories under their categories okay that is something we might be uh, building out later on as well but for now let's just add this divider and to be honest i don't really like this full screen divider here so maybe we'll just do a small divider here as well So let's see, let's go into this one, and we have right here, let's remove this one, and then let's add a divider to the uh, container instead. Yeah. make it gray light gray how does that look fairly I see it Actually, instead of doing the doing a uh, border here, let's remove this border and just add a divider spacer. Change this to vertical. And this div block will go DRAM. And we will have a height of point one RAM. wrap this in a the block and do margin top to margin all Do the background color black, then maybe turn it down to like 40. And make this one. How does that look? Yeah. 
I'm thinking something along these lines. Maybe actually with like 20. Yeah. That's good. And actually now that we uh, that I see it, I want some space. thinking why this uh, is so far up but that's because we of course we uh, changed the height of it and we have a border on So we want something like that, right? Right about there. Another divider up top. Or do we? Yeah. So let's just duplicate it like that. And then do the margin. Margin top and bottom. Can we do that? Mm. Okay, this works, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and when I think about it, let's just make these actually a little bit bigger in font size as well. Maybe something like... Something like that. And then, of course, we have to Let's 
something along those lines. And actually, do we even want this divider here? How does it look without it? I kind of want something, right? What if we actually space these out? I can't really... Let's do this a little bit. they get centered but they also get <clears throat> oh, not all of it I want these to take up all of the space So do So we spaced them out a little bit. 
so now when we <clears throat> well that's no good how this works. Okay. Basically, I think we did these a little bit too big. out Canada's <laughs> so close though This is the uh, This is when we don't want this item here, but we also let's just see if we size it down to one run will it work then? Must it be enough? Yeah, so this is like perfectly good. So maybe we just have that like that. Uh, we'll do that. While we're at it, let's also make this link to the homepage. I think that's gonna be all for this stream today. Um, I will continue to work on this tomorrow. And uh, then we'll do the header, we'll connect the CMS to the rest of the site. And yeah. Continue the design then. There's a lot of small stuff that I just want to fix right away. Um, this is really what happens when you start building. better but also I don't like this being that far apart now anymore 
So let's do it like that, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens. All right, I'm gonna stop here uh, for this time, and uh, I will continue on later tonight or tomorrow. But thank you for watching, and uh, see you.